All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're recording this on a fine Tuesday afternoon. And uh, I'm excited because it's not five o'clock yet. So I just, I needed to take a break. And uh, I got a gentleman returning. We, we live streamed before, or I think we attempted to live stream before. And we were having probably every version of tech issue that I've had randomly over four years happen in one day. So we were meant to follow up. So I'll quick, give you a quick background about this gentleman because I'm just looking forward to actually finally hanging out and having a proper show with him. Uh, but he got connected to me through one of those crazy podcast agencies. And uh, I, I do appreciate that now because it makes my life a lot easier. But he is truly a serial entrepreneur. He's an author. He's uh, definitely a renowned business broker. His business is his brand. His name is Peterson Acquisitions. And guest co-hosting today is the man and possibly the myth, the legend, Chad Peterson. Welcome back, sir. Thank you for having me on again. And I think that we've got the tech right. And I look forward to being on here with you, brother. I really do. By the way, love the virtual background. Uh, oh, thank you. What, what, what piece of that? Where, when did you take that image? Um, that's just off like, uh, whatever, Pixabay or yeah. whatever. You know, you can buy any picture and put it in there. So It's, it's, it's very classy. I like it. Thank you. So. For people, people listening and not watching in the video world, it's like this, uh, it's like a Vic old Victorian home look to it. But Yeah, I, w I wonder if the yeah. beard goes with it is what I'm thinking. I, I was, know you know what, I'm not. thinking like you need to have, not to promote smoking or anything, but like a pipe or like a cigar yeah. and a scotch, you know? Yeah, well, that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> you you go. got me pegged, brother. You got me pegged. <laughs> I, uh, I will say we are recording this during the, the, wild, the crazy and wild pandemic era of 2020. And... I, I got to say my scotch collection has grown. Yeah, so is mine. <laughs> I've decided to build out quite a portfolio. And it's not, it's not like I'm drinking all of it. It's just, oh, I have nothing else better to do. So next time I'm crossing over the border into New Jersey, I'll just stop by the liquor store there and pick some stuff up. Because for a little while here in Pennsylvania, they closed them. Uh, our, okay. our liquor stores here are managed and controlled by the state. Very archaic, by the way. Uh, I, they really just need to let go of the reins and let entrepreneurs run the show because uh, I think they know what they're doing. But that was always frustrating. So it's like, well, fine, I'm just going to, next time I pop over the river into New Jersey, sometimes uh, I've intrigued your feedback since we're recording during COVID. I, I get tired of being in front of my computer. <laughs> sure. Like, I need to unplug because before all this, I used to travel like three days out of the week uh, for business. So now I can't. So I was like, I'm just going to unplug, get in my car and just go for a drive. <laughs> Right. Are you doing yeah. any of that? Oh yeah. Yeah. And I'll Google all the scotches and figure out maybe yep. something that might be something that might be up my alley and I'll go try it. And then I'm like, ah, I just go back to my normal one. So yeah, my, my collection right, what's your is go to? Lagavulin 16. Got it out there right now. So yeah. I was yep. actually just, I just had a nip of it about three days ago. So what is it, today's Tuesday? Yeah. So we've been over like Saturday, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah love uh, it. I, I did pick up some new Laphroaigs and uh -huh. that's normally not my go-to because it's very peaty and um, smoky. Yep. Uh, but my one buddy who we haven't been able to hang out this whole time, huge cycling nut like I am, uh, he, he's the one that turned me on to that. And he, that guy starts with that. And I was like, okay, I got it. I got to start off with a, with a nice clean Highlands and then I'll ease into that one. Cause it, it was, Depending on the level, it could punch you right in the face. <laughs> oh, I love it too. I love it too. By the way, I'm a cyclist as well. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't cycle. Know if we talked I, about that last time. Yeah, you know, I haven't been cycling lately. Uh, it's been real hot, and I won't go out there if it's real hot. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but I love the cycle. It's therapeutic, man. I mean, it really is. People don't people that don't road bike don't realize there's more to exercise to it. It's it's a relaxation period for me. I'm sure you feel the same way. Yeah, let's pause on that. I just had this conversation the other day about mindset, right? And your mindset changes. So like when we finish this show, uh, I'm probably going to take the wife and we're going to go do some mountain biking. Now, different thought process when I'm on my mountain bike than when I'm on my road bike. When I'm on my road bike, uh, if I want to break the day up right now, I just unplug for an hour or two and I go out by myself and I'll you know, throw in like 20, 30 miles you know, for a nice, nice weekday. And it's a completely different mindset shift. I think about things differently. Sometimes I don't think at all. I mean, right. I, what is your mindset like when you run your road bike? Well, it seems like about 20 or 30 minutes in, maybe that's the endorphins kicking in. Uh, you'll have a total shift in mentality. Uh, it's, it is breaking away. You're on your own. Nobody's with you. 
uh, you're, you're cranking the pedals. You're almost, I don't want to say in a meditative state, but you're definitely in some sort of zone and it does change your thoughts, your thought processes. Um, I think it's anecdotal to, uh, sadness, depression, or anything you're going through. If you can go out there and pedal and on those, you know, just pound those pedals for an hour, you'll, you'll come back a new man. I, I got to tell you that if, if you went out into my garage gym right now, I had, I used to teach spinning for six years when I was in my corporate days. So I used to go in and teach like a five, 6 a.m. class. And that was my morning coffee. And then I would, you know, shower at the gym, get changed, get all professional, and then go do the corporate gig. And like I was managing people and everything else. And they're like, why are you so awake in the morning? And I'm like, well, I just got done sweating my butt off for an hour on the bike and yelling at other people to do the same. So now, granted, that was more instructional. <laughs> well, yeah, because was, by the at seven thirty in the morning, you already felt like it was two o'clock in the afternoon after yeah. everything you've been through. See, now yeah. th those years were awesome though, because by by the third to fourth year of spinning, teaching spinning, I was I was amping my road cycling up, and I would teach at six a.m. and then I go meet my buddies for road ride you know, at the end of the business day, like five oh, five thirty. Wow. Yeah, you were and, you were burning twenty eight hundred calories a day, dude. My buddies were like. I, I was off like a rocket. They're like, like you, you taught again this morning, didn't you? I was like, yeah, I'm all warmed up. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> but I love it. Again, thought process. Uh, now, granted, if you're, if you're riding with buddies, you might be trying to say a couple things here and there. But sometimes I tell them, like, listen, we could talk before and we could talk after the ride. Let me just ride. Yeah. And, and, and most of them are pretty cool with that. That's why sometimes I just like going on my solo ride. I just, no one's going to sure. bother me ride my bike to your point i got the things calmed down i'm unplugged i'm not looking at my computer screens i'm not i don't have headphones on a microphones all some stuff so right right uh, i think a lot of us underestimate the importance of that especially right now I mean, absolutely absolutely you know, mental, the men, show. I'm stressed mental out. yeah mental health has declined during this covid pandemic and anything you can do to make yourself mentally healthy is for the better and i think that comes with intense ex exercise it also comes with intense unplugging you know you have to do the unplug lay down veg out you have to do that because there's just an air of stress on everybody right now you know well, so you, you uh, talked before the show, like you've recently started another side side hustle, another another business in the in the works, which is again classic serial entrepreneur, and that's not easier said than done either. Uh, I, I've got a couple side things here and there, and I'm always like, well, if I if I start this right, then I'm pulling focus away from possibly this and this. So I got to make sure my ducks are in the row, things are automated, my systems are in place before I distract myself with something else, and that's stressful in itself. Uh, I know a lot of people especially at the beginning of all of this, uh, when people started getting locked down and self-quarantining or uh, businesses closing left and right, which is another whole podcast in itself, talking about the successes and failures during this transition. But I, I was motivating some of my friends, like, listen, if you're laid off or if you're furloughed, now's the time to finally dig deep and think about these ideas that you've always had about possibly considering creating a business or solving a problem, which is what entrepreneurs do, right? Like, Hey, there's a problem. Nobody's doing it that well. I could probably do that better. Let's, let's figure that out. Right. Absolutely. Isn't that part Absolutely. of the game. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I did. I mean, what we did is I, I've got a friend of mine, his name's Warren and he's, he's out of, he, he's not out of work, but you know, he, he wasn't, he's not a marketing guy. He doesn't know how to go start his own business. But he's a hell of a carpenter and he's got, a, he's got a heart the size of Texas. And he just needed help to go out there and, and, uh, and get the business for uh, building decks. And, and the trend is that everybody's at home now. People aren't spending their money at bars and restaurants and vacations and planes and, you know, cruises and everything else. People are spending money on their homes. Yep. So we started a debt company and we have had almost 300 people in the last two months contact us to build decks for them. There you go. People are upping their outdoor game. Their yeah, house. they're so. they're they're spending their money on their house, and so we started that business. It has been stressful. It led to some personal problems in my life because the, my gal that who who has recently left me, um, uh, she was part of the business. So you have to decide right now what stress you can take on, what is going to be um, more fruitful for you you know, holding on to your personal life and your sanity right now, or if expanding and adding to your, 
your business and, and money right now is more important. I mean, you have to decide that because, you know, you can put too much stress on your time, on yourself during these times. And that's exactly what I did. That's what we did. And like, like we said earlier, you know, relationships and mental health are at an all time low right now. Even if you're, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're a newlywed or if you've been in a, in a, you know, a, a grudging relationship for five years, it, regardless right now is tough on people. And it so, is. so it has been, it has been tough, but entrepreneurs keep going. That's what we do. One foot in front of the other. We keep on going until we get somewhere. And that's what I'm doing. Well, one kudos. Uh, this is not easy and you are correct. Unfortunately, I, I don't, want to have to look at the data later, but I'm a data guy and I know that when this is all finished blowing through, uh, you're not alone as far as these relationship challenges. It sucks. Um, I don't, there's no other better way to say it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. th thank you for being so truthful and honest about that too. It's, I also believe in the power of transparency. We, you and I were joking before the show about how I really don't care what I talk about. I tell, I've been on I've been invited on a romantic podcast one time because they found out that I didn't care if I talked about how my wife, before she became my wife, broke up with my ass because my head was so far up my ass. So uh, it was, uh, they, they loved that theme. And I was like, would you talk about that on a show? And I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. I don't care anymore. Like, I, and it's so free when you reach that level of transparency. I'm not saying everybody's ready for it right away, but. Uh, oh, I totally I am. I, I totally right. am. Otherwise, otherwise, I feel like it bottles up inside of you. You know, you got to just let it be known, you yeah. know? Yeah. And it's not about criticism or, or tearing anybody down. It's about just feeling more open and, and, sure. and starting to embrace it. And sure. I needed to do it because I was always Mr. Oh, I'm Mr. Successful, this was success, that. And I was like, no, there, there you go. I suck at romance. I <laughs> mm. wasn't good at it. Uh, still working at it. So, I mean, granted I, granted, I improved because I won her back, started a whole new relationship, and then eventually we got married last year. So, so right far. Right on, man. Right on. Good for you. So far. Good for you. <laughs> Good for I mean, if you go talk to her right now, she'd be like, since the COVID started, she's like, yeah, he's more stressed than he's ever been. Am I working on that? Absolutely. Right. I can't control all of the components around me. So that's a little bit stressful. Uh, but when I used to be a firefighter, like I couldn't control all those elements either. Those were stressful, but we were trained in ways to mitigate and manage those processes mentally and physically. I was never trained in ways and processes to manage COVID quarantining, seeing friends, businesses uh, fail, uh, seeing mixed uh, guidelines with little to no science supporting them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So oh, it's yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. It's madness, man. Yeah. Frustrating. So. Yeah. Plus, plus putting out a fire is a lot easier than uh, uh, cultivating and maintaining a relationship with a woman. <laughs> Which is why I didn't date back then. I was, I was Mr. I was a self-proclaimed bachelor, you know? Oh, I don't have time for that, you know? my fire yeah. career travel, blah, 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 blah. I just didn't want to, I just didn't want to risk my heart. Yeah. Because right. you didn't I didn't want to commit. Kind of, uh, uh, and yeah. I didn't, I didn't have enough self work put in yet. And again, you could put in a lot of self work too, but in the end, to your point, right? You can't plan for these things. You mm -hmm. can't, you can't plan for COVID. You can't, who would have thought that a, a, a worldwide pandemic would do all the things that it's doing now you could not have planned obviously an impact on your, on your relationship. You never would have, you didn't think you'd end up launching a, a, a 300, uh, 300 quote request deck business, right? right. We already got right. 300 quotes. And it's like, which by the way, let's, let's, let's pause on that. Um, right before this quarantine, a, a very good friend of mine, fellow mountain biker, he's wanted to start his own side hustle. And he was already doing like, he's kind of like, he doesn't call himself a contractor. He calls himself a, a like a handyman. Yeah, he's that go-to guy. He cares a lot about, he sounds like your buddy, a lot about quality, very dialed in, didn't understand the business side of it, the sales, the marketing side of it or anything. Well, it's funny because he just texted me a week ago saying, hey, man, he's like, I just landed my first $10,000 deck quote job. And I was like, nice. So, right on. But right when COVID was kicking off, I was already talking to him. I'm like, dude, we got to dial your branding in. Like, this is what I do. Like, let's talk strategy, execution, figure it out. And then as a gift, I, I put together a whole logo package. He loved the logo. I had some super high end, uh, like you can feel to the touch quality business cards since that's more of a, you know, face to face business a lot. And he, he texts me probably once a week right now. He's like, here we go again. Another customer's like, wow, that's the coolest card I've ever had in my life. 
and I'm not a business card designer. I just, mm -hmm. I just dialed the dots in and it feels good because he's happy sure. and he's a friend. And now he's able to provide new sources of income for his family during these trying times that right. honestly, he didn't have the balls to pull the trigger on before. And, and I, he, he listens to all these shows. So I, that's why I like to poke him a little bit. Cause I'm like, dude, good job, man. Like these, this is not easy. Starting businesses can fail. Oh, Sorry. absolutely. Yeah. 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 We're off to the races though. We're, we're doing really well and we see nothing in our path that will stop us. We're doing really well. We're proud of it. And that's uh, just a side deal for me. And really it was similar to your story. I was doing it for a friend and doing it for my woman at the time because she needed to be making more money due to her situation. And um, so it, it, it was just a fit for all. And so I put my business expertise into it to assist it. And uh, that's where we're at. So um, it, it's good to, uh, keep pushing because, you know, boredom and being stagnant, there's, there's, that's no way to be, you know, Just keep on, keep on moving forward. That's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. No matter what, regardless of this pandemic, I'm going to get, I'm going to do better and get better. Uh, no matter what. Well, I, I love the theme because that's all we can do. Right. Mm -hmm. I asked why I, I actually was getting frustrated with some friends of mine because, or just colleagues, I'm like, guys, why haven't you pulled the trigger on that yet? Like, this is the time. You have less distractions. Like, that's to say, like, I don't, I'm not planning travel. I'm not having to book this, pay this. Like, you've got all, all this extra liquidity of income. Well, we, we've done things around here that, I, I mean, obviously, I put a lot more work into my man's own gym out in the garage and uh, do a little upgrades there. Uh, scored myself another new mountain bike. And I, I don't normally buy new bikes all the time, but I'm like, you know what? I've been busting my help before this. It's been on the top the shopping list and a crazy deal popped up. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get myself a bike. I'm going to stimulate the economy. Um, never cared so much about my stock portfolio and investments until now. Like mm -hmm. I'm now really upping my financial education game because my wife's got a, a leg up on me on that. She was raised with a better brain with me on that. So now I'm trying to level up to kind of catch up to her and, and what her family could teach me and, so these are all things like you're saying, right? Wearing multiple hats, like take advantage of the free time and fill that in with these other areas. Maybe you didn't have time to deal with before. So sure. Yeah, absolutely. I like, I like the term level up, man. I love that term. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the problem is right now, mindset, right? Back, back when we earlier shows, show like a lot of people are, are feeling like they have to level down or they're being forced to level down. Like, Correct. Oh, That's what I was trying to say is that, you know, I'm going to yeah. get better here. I'm not, I'm going to level up. I'm not going to go backwards. You know, I mean, but how I'm, are you gonna, doing that? Right. Like how it's, it's not going to be the same for everybody, but like, what are some ways that you're really trying to keep your head in the game then? Well, up? I like, I like Warren Buffett's quote, be fearful when other people or, or be optimistic be brave whenever people are, are fearful and be fearful whenever the people are being brave, something like that, right. you know, uh, you know, in, in tough times, people that uh, have the balls and the gusto and the foresight to keep on going, seems like those are the ones that win, you know, in my industry with what I do, I mean, I sell businesses and it's been a shockwave through my industry. I mean, okay. it, that was my next question. I'm like, well, how's yeah, that it's, going? Well, I mean, banks have tightened up. Banks are doing all the PPP loans. They're doing all the relief loans. You know, so it's been a real hard go for everybody in my industry. That being said, you know, look at Rockefeller. I mean, he made his money because everybody else couldn't hold their breath throughout right. the Great Depression. So I'm doing well. I've, I've got a lot going on. I'm selling 22 businesses right now. Wow. And that's because I went into this COVID doing well. And I've sold a few businesses during COVID, but they barely got done. Most people in my industry are sitting on their thumbs right now because everything's kind of on pause. And I refuse to think that way. I'm going to keep pushing harder. I'm bringing on uh, two businesses this week. Nice. And um, my optimism is high and I'm going to get them done. It might take me longer. We might have to wait till the banks open up to, to do more, but I'm going to keep going, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a shame. A lot of the things you just said, the word it kept ringing in my head was it's about leveling up versus leveling down. But let's talk about uh, the scarcity mindset versus the abundance mindset. So unfortunately, yes, a lot of banks, financial institutions, um, people that are more entry level in their investment knowledge uh, are being very tight. They got scarcity. I got to be tight. Got to be more conservative. And again, to your point, right? The Rockefeller story is from a lot of the research I've done, and from what I observed in 08, 09, uh, the last big financial uh, crack in the face. 
people that I've connected with did quite well because Absolutely. while people were selling and getting out, they're like, great, that makes everything cheaper for me. Because sure. one rule of the market is what goes down must go back up. So yes. uh, it's interesting to see who has the abundance mindsets and the strategy to align with that. And who all of a sudden you didn't realize is a little bit more scarcity minded. And all of a sudden that's become more aware too. And I'm like, wow, didn't know you thought that way. It exposes it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, and you got to realize that this economy, 08 was uh, worse than this, but not acutely. Th this is way worse than 08 was, oh, yeah. but it's not going to, but it's not going to be that way long term. In other words, 08 had a five year effect. Mm -hmm. And I believe that here in the next 30 days, I think you're going to see this, this country just start roaring again. Um, that's what I believe anyway. I don't think it's going to be, this is going to be, be, maybe be the hardest and shortest hit to the economy that we've ever seen. Which is funny because yeah. if you listen to some other influencers out there, they're saying the damage from this is going to be long lasting. Now, to be fair, numbers wise, maybe, but I like what you just said there. I got colleagues in all in health and fitness spaces, gyms, just chomping at the bit to open up. Everybody, I have uh, CrossFit. Well, which is uh, that's that's a big thing. That just popped up on the radar this week. Apparently, somebody said something wrong. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of CrossFit businesses that are no no longer known as CrossFit businesses, uh, and they're finally going to launch their own brand. And I'm watching their social media feeds, and you know, some gyms 20, 30 minutes from me, remodeling, repainting new mm. graphics, new designs, new logos. Like we can't wait to open up and show you the new space. Like that's what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. He's, yeah. They're chomping at the bit to rip the lid off. Yeah. That's and that, that's, and, and what, what you have here and let's talk about Trump for a minute. You know, half the country hates Trump, half the country loves him. He's polarizing as hell. So whenever we went into 16, you know, one out of two people either loved him or hated him. Well, going into an economy like that, if the president and and the political landscape shifts, you don't know what's going to happen. But what we did see is we saw the economy just rip like it's never happened before. That was because of the presidential shift. That was because of the shift of power. Now I think we're going to go into a time period where the reason the economy is going to rip again, it's going to take off like crazy is because of the people. Everybody's tired of being home. Everybody wants to spend money. Everybody wants to make money. People want to hug you. People want to hug each other. Yep. I mean, for the first time in history, it's like, man, I'm, you know, I might just get out there and get weird and just start hugging people after this is over. You know, I mean, I people, people are just ready to get out and be social. They want to be outdoors. They want to be doing things. So you're going to see, um, Everybody, I guess, coming out of prison, maybe. I mean, this is going to be like everybody just got out of jail. And, yeah. and, and the world's going to come alive, maybe like we've never seen it before, is what I think. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot, of, obviously, as you said, polarization. There's a lot of passion right now. There's a lot of concerns around race and, and obviously BLM and everything. And it's unfortunate. But also, I think a lot of that got amplified because of the fact people already, as you said earlier in the show, people already beat up. People yes. were tired of already being indoors, being restricted from doing things, whether it was based on clear guidelines or not so clear guidelines, actually some ballot signs or not ballot signs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I agree with you. I feel like that's already all in the past. All we could do is keep moving forward, keep looking forward. Correct. And with that boost and positivity and uh, some rebalancing of, of, of ethnic love and, and, and racial love for each other, I'm, I truly believe, and I want to see that. I want to see, everybody was joking around that, oh man, you can't complain about 2019 anymore. 2020 is going to be the year to forget. The year's not over yet. Oh, I would love to see this to be become one of the most historically marking turnaround years in, in a long it time. It will be. Right? It will be. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it will be. Be like I, I think, like I said, it'll be the hardest hit to the economy, but for the shortest period and with a massive rebound. I really believe that. I think I'm right. I really do. Well, let's, let's pause on that then. So what do you think are going to be some essential things that people watching or listening to this show uh, to keep going from 2020 into 2021, for example, is, okay, fine. How do we do that? What, what, where does the abundance come from as a small business? Because you, you obviously acquire and, and move businesses all the time. So you, I know for a fact, in order for you to acquire a business and sell a business, it's got to be valuable. So there's definitely some 
good things that are being done and some not so good things being done. So let's, why don't we share some of that? <laughs> well, you know, most of my companies that I'm selling right now that have a high demand are uh, manufacturing and distribution. Um, I also, I sold a trucking company not too long ago, uh, just about six, eight weeks ago. Um, I sold a trucking company because that's, that's essential too. You know, a lot of the restaurants are going to get crushed from this. So, you know, restaurants, even before the COVID thing was, is always a big gamble. But if you look at some of the specialty restaurants, um, there are some restaurants where I'm at that, that have actually thrived during this. One of them is a barbecue place that, um, they were always doing drive through, but now that's their only business and people love to go have barbecue. Well, they up to their game and they have music in the parking lot. Nice. And what you can do is you can get in the parking lot, you can drive through, you can get your barbecue and you can turn a, your radio station to a certain station and listen to the band play. And so they've just upped their game. I mean, so it's, it's interesting to see how that's, you know, how some people have decided to capitalize on that. So if they wanted, which I don't think they where, will. Where are they at? We should give them a shout out. What, Kansas what city. city. What the, yeah. I mean, what's it called? Uh, it is, um, so much barbecue uh, in Kansas city. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. That's, that's why I'm having a hard time thinking of it right now. Uh, um, I mean, is there, is there that many drive up barbecue places? Yeah, there is. Oh, okay. Yeah, there is. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. It's like, uh, smoke kissed barbecue or something like that. I don't quote me. I'd have to look okay. it up myself, yeah. but cause there's barbecue is all over here in Kansas city, but yeah, even Zarda is doing really well. Um, quite a few places. I just can't think of their name right now. If you had asked me another time, I, I could have spit out their name. Uh, that's okay. I mean, I mean, but, again, that's the other thing is that Kansas city, Missouri or Kansas city, Kansas. That's the other part of it, right? Like uh, people forget yeah. that there's, there's two cities. <laughs> right. Well, when you live here though, you don't differentiate. You just say I'm from oh. Kansas city. Yeah, um, when you're when you're here because it's not, you know, uh, I'm nobody. I don't know anybody from Kansas City, Kansas, really. Uh, but <laughs> it's uh, all so about we, the Missouri. Well, yeah, we just say Kansas City. Even if you live on the Kansas side, you'll still say you live in Kansas City. Nice. No, yeah. But uh, I to answer your question, I mean, moving into 2020, 2021, I really hope, man, that. I hope that we learn something as a culture. I hope we learned that we can't be so easily coerced into taking our liberties for granted. I mean, we, we, I, I hope they're not able to instill another lockdown on us. I think, I, I hope the United States, I hope the people just say, you know what, we're not doing it. I hope that's what happens. Well, uh... Again, I've interviewed enough health experts and done my own research to, again, this is my show, so I can make my opinion and people can take it with a grain of salt. But I also have been training for the past two months companies on indoor air quality. Uh, my biggest client is the HVAC industry, right? The air is healthier outdoors than it is indoors. So you go and quarantine people indoors. Now they're left to be susceptible to whatever conditions their indoor air quality is currently set at. So if you're somebody like me who already invested in some technology and has some very nice UV lamp solutions in my system before, I, before the president even needed to drop UV as a, as a talking item, we've been working with this technology for years. It just mm. never was a, a, a hero, right? No one was talking about it. Uh, but now people being stuck in their homes, now it's like, okay, well, is my filter doing a good job? You know, do I have a humidity control issue? I just interviewed a doctor last night, a very world-renowned ER doctor used to work with uh, infectious diseases, all kinds of stuff. And he's like, this guy, he's like, we're pushing to the DC, uh, to the Capitol now to get this pushed around the world, uh, awareness on humidity. Something as simple as the balance of humidity in your air. He's like, the drier your air, the faster airborne viruses can push through because there's nothing slowing it down. Something mm -hmm. as simple as humidity. He's like, if you got a 50, 55% humidity, he's like, you're, you got a great spot. He's like, that's why, you know, places like New Orleans or Florida, these higher humid areas might not have as big of an eruption as some areas of the country because of their humidity. Now, granted, sure. if, a, if a dry front moves through and dries out that atmosphere in that region for a day or two, you might see a thing. It was a very interesting episode. So, yeah, so, so the summer months come with more humidity. The winter months come with less humidity, and that's why people start getting sick. Yeah, it's, right. temperature, and, it's temperature and humidity related, no doubt. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So I, I was just like, uh, he, he was, he was speaking about, I'm like, this is great, man. I, I talk about IAQ all the time, indoor air quality, man, let's go. Yeah. And it was cool having it backed up by, you know, a medical professional who gets this and understands this and they've done some of their own research on it. So, so that's my point, right? Like nobody was ready for this, but also no one, no one really thought about, okay, back to home upgrades or business upgrades. Oh, what's the quality of my air? Now all of a sudden commercial institutions want to understand this stuff. Like, oh man, well, when we open up, are we doing enough for our indoor air quality for our customers and our patrons coming in? So this, we're going to see a shift in the, in the business world in that too. It's pretty wild sure. times. But back yeah. to your point is who's guiding it? Where's the direction? Is it backed up? You know, are we just going to blindly follow unsubstantiated information in the future? Correct. Hopefully not. Yeah, hopefully not. You know, I'll equate it to a, a speed limit sign let's just say that uh there's a road that should be 65 but they've got it at 45 if we the people decided all of us that we're going to drive at 65 miles an hour on that 45 mile an hour road there's nothing that they could do about it right there's just not enough cops there's not enough you know i mean it'd be a senseless if we the people state hey we're not going to let you take our liberties away you know, we're, we're not going to take up unsubstantiated evidence and, and let it ruin our lives and our economy. We've got to get outside. We've got to remain healthy. We've got to remain socially healthy. Healthy. We can't let our relationships fall apart. We've got to have friends. We've got to maintain a social fabric. You're not doing this to us. Well, you would think that that's what happened. But as soon as it hit the States, everybody was fearful. And when and to, to even geek out on this even more, when you're fearful – your cortisol levels are pumping and your stress hormones are pumping and you're even more susceptible to yep. disease. And now you're not around other people. So anything that you would get immune to, you're not able to. So there could be a rebound effect whenever we get back out there into the herd where people start getting sick. And of course they're going to call it COVID. You know, now you got a cold. Until right, so you got a test to confirm it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Which, by the way, reminder: the flu still exists. The flu hasn't gone away. Influenza, you know, again, you know, COVID yeah. is a, is a form of influenza, a different strain, but it's still a, under the coronavirus sector. But sure. it's 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 that's I keep reminding people too. I'm like, hey guys, remember, Corona's existed before. There's more than one Corona. You know, SARS. Remember SARS? That was very aggressive. Oh yeah. It, it just it just didn't have the perfect conditions for you know rapid expansion. Right. We just happen to have a, a, a faster moving item this time. So, but I, I've always said, like, I make a joke about this. I know it's not backed by science, but my, my younger brother and I used to get into manure fights on the farm. So my father, to this day, he actually said a, a, a meat packing inspector, he, he's an organic cattle broker. He, so he, you buy and sell businesses, he's, he's doing that for, for farms. And so he'll, if animals are not going to a market for sale, they'll go to slaughter. So I, I walked into my first slaughterhouse with my dad onto a kill floor at like 10 or 12 years old. Clearly, this episode is not going to be no longer supporting vegans, <laughs> which I don't want to support anyway. Uh, so the point is, though, it's like, dude, the, the inspector goes to my dad. My dad told me this a few weeks ago. He's like, yeah, he's like, you don't get sick, do you? And my dad's 72, still running his business. And he's like, yeah, you know, you get that once a year thing. He's like, yeah, he's like. So you didn't know how many thousands of forms of airborne and surface area bacteria and everything else you know, when animals get opened up and you know why, that's why once you know once meat has been processed that's why it's chilled and frozen he's like but do you know what you get exposed to just walking through a kill floor and you've been doing this for how long and my dad's like you know over 50 years <laughs> so yeah like, he's like that's why you don't get sick so again immune systems right? exposure like exposure yeah yeah i'm not a scientist we're not i was like i'm sorry grew up on a farm used to play in the dirt and the mud a lot uh, throughout my life, I've, you know, I've moved away from farming, but I've grown into, we were just talking about earlier, cycling, being outdoors. I was a firefighter in the wilderness. You know, I, I, I was actually probably healthier than I ever was because I was camping under the stars every night while fighting wildfires. Like that was our lifestyle. So right. you're around mother nature and all that clean mountain air, whether there was smoke or not, right? It's all of these variables. And it's like, yeah, I chose to no longer be stuck in a cubicle in a, in a closed off office building. I tried right. that for a few years and it drove me crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, well, good for you, man. That's, a, that's awesome. I mean, it, you painted a picture there too. I can see you fighting fires and trying to get some sleep and, and sleeping outside. And I mean, what a, what a beautiful time that must have been for you.
It was an awesome interview. And, yeah. and my beard was not as majestic as yours right now, but <laughs> I had a quite the beefy beard. Uh, the wife saw those photos because those were before she knew me, and she's like, "You are not bringing that back." And I was like, "Oh yeah, crazy. she's a she's a beard she, hater, huh?" She's 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 okay with the scruff. But I was like, yeah, but the beard eventually softens up. I was like, I need enough length to get the beard oils going and everything else. And she's like, no, I'm good. Yeah. Well, you know what? Some women really love it, though. I'm going to say 75% of women love it. I agree. Actually, when you ask like half of the girlfriends, uh, you know, it's it's come up. And actually, the, the woman who's a friend of ours, we used to ski race coach together. Uh, we had her marry us. Uh, so we had a big ski themed wedding up in Canada. And uh, she, she was like, oh, I highly recommend it for more ways than one. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, some women love it, man. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, clearly not the beard fan, but that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was going to say for you who aren't watching this, you have to, you have to go watch this on YouTube or, or Facebook because last time you and I talked, Chad, I don't even think it was that thick. I mean, you, you still uh, had a good sized beard, but yeah, now the mustache is really in strong. Yeah. The, the stash is really, that's what separates the men from the boys right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look like you could be one of those arti artisanal uh, bartenders right now with like the the leather cowhide apron and, uh -huh. and get some wax in that get get a yep. couple twists going um, sure yeah yeah, yeah it's no, strong it's, work it, it's thank you man thank you yeah. i appreciate that I, I will i will always honor a quality beer so thank you i i think i'm the only uh I think I'm the only guy who does m a work or or business brokering that that is branded by the beard you know? It is interesting. That's a great way to set yourself off from a brand because if you think about it, yeah, most high-end business deals, a lot of people in the finance sector, they're they're usually clean shaven. Yes. You know, it's not it's not a thing I, I normally see. So right, yeah. Well, you know, in order to be to to do what I'm doing, you have to be in a Brooks Brothers suit, clean shaven, you know, with your tie and all that and. I, I just don't fit the conventional norm, but you know, I'm doing something right because I've been ranked the number one business broker in the country and my work has been noted in Forbes and Inc. Magazine and Seeking Alpha and my book sells all around the world. So uh, with, with the beard or without the beard, it's still, you know, I, I'm able to perform just like the guys who uh, want to look like they're Mr. Corporate America, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I just threw a quick screen share up just to show your site again, uh, petersonacquisitions.com. I, I will say, like, I, I'm not here to sell what you do, but I believe in what you do because I've learned from a lot of businesses as well as actually, you know, just go off the HVAC sector, for example. A lot of people look at that as a blue collar profession. And I was like, I've met some very white collar successful contracting company owners who learn to scale and grow their business appropriately and they're doing multi multi-million dollars worth of hvc stuff a year so you may call it a blue collar profession but that's all in your mind so uh, well i wrote a book i wrote a book called from blue to white and that was to teach people um how to become a white collar guy in a blue collar industry or teach a blue collar guy how to uh become that guy and to your point, you know, you can take something that's, I mean, that's H, HVAC, plumbing, whatever. It is blue collar because it's trade, you know, it's not, it's not college. But if you can bring business systems and marketing and management and branding, and you can bring all that to it and build your company up, I mean, there's a hell of a lot of money to be made. You know, it, it's just that old thing, Scott, where your parents say, go to college because I want you to have opportunity. Well, I mean... Plumbing and HVAC and all those kinds of things, those trades are never going away. They were essential this entire time of transition. Yeah, right? and so, so, so many kids are going to college to be a doctor or a lawyer. And, you know, the salary of a lawyer is what, average of like 119000 something like that. You know, a, do a doctor, I think, I think it's like 200 some thousand, you know, 220,000, something like that, depending on what you're in. I mean, there's some surgeons out there that make a hell of a lot more than that, but you know, if you're just a guy who understands business and marketing and message and branding, and you can go out there and you can build uh, a craft or a trade and be the guy that can build the systems around uh, that trade, you can, you can make millions, oh, you yeah. know, and, and there's not, there's not a, a university that's ever going to be able to teach you that you have to learn from others. And frankly, that's where people nowadays are getting their education from. They're getting educations from people like me and you right here. You know, I mean, and I, I would say most people 
that are smart enough to realize that, that college is no longer the route, that you have to learn from others, or they call it mimicking others, whatever. Um, you can get online, you can find uh, somebody that's, that's in that lane, and you can, you can figure out how they're driving. They'll tell you how they drive it. Yep. And you, you can hop in their lane and you can, you can mimic what they did and you can maybe do it better than what they did. And I think that the, the smart ones are doing that nowadays. They're, they're not going to, to a four year university that's going to take you five years anyway and struggle and get out with student loan debt and be miserable to go get a, you know, a, a general degree only to get out and be a general person looking for a general job. I mean, it really is just an aimless path. Yeah. Uh, but to your point, you know, learn a trade and put business systems around it. You can make a hell of a lot of money and, and have fun too and, and control your own life. You know, I love where you're going with this because uh, I, I, I didn't think about that. Either. So the, my HVAC contractor is actually a friend. Uh, his now wife is uh, somebody who grew up with my wife. And so obviously I sent him all my work and now he's working on my friends and everything else. But here's the best part. So his wife, you know, went to college just like my wife did. And um, I eventually paid my way through school as an adult, but I don't use any of it right now. And, uh, but Hey, Greg, I have a piece of paper on the wall. So my point was, so this guy was in jail for a little while and then, you know, cleaned up his act, became very religious, rebuilt his life, started his little side business. And now, his wife, college educated, top of her field, amazing uh, pharmaceutical sales type of career. Then they decided to get married and start the family. Okay. Well, now she's like, well, he's already doing great with the business. Why don't I help him grow the business and not go back to the pharmaceutical profession? And she never really liked the drug industry anyway. So now they've, they've, they've got their new child. They have a new house. His income has grown. Now she can then take her free time and help try and figure that out. I know that's a risky move. You've shared with us already today is it's, that could work. That could not work. Um, I, I actually made that joke to them a little while ago. I was like, hey, just be careful the transition. If, if my wife tried to tell me how to run my business right now and me, like she's a veterinary doctor, I don't tell her how to run her business. I give her tips on growing sales, marketing, strategy stuff. But I also realized I won't tell her. She's got to ask me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. I'm still not willing to give it up. And that's, <laughs> that's good wisdom for all. You know, Jesus said, don't cast your pearl among the swine. And that, and that, that means, you know, don't, don't give people uh, pearls of wisdom unless they ask for it. Mm. That's what it is. You know, because well, then that, that wisdom falls on deaf ears, which, which carries no value, you know? So it's yeah. like, what was the point, you know, right, right. translating that. By the way, real quick, sure. I, I didn't know I didn't know about the other book, so I got a screen share. There it is, from blue to white. It's yeah. on Amazon. There I like it is. It. Yeah. Yeah, and you know you know what I'm most proud of on that book is that Scott Alexander, who wrote Rhinoceros Success, he wrote I a saw beautiful that. he wrote a beautiful forward for me, and um, you know the book has sold, but you know I haven't marketed it that heavy over the years. I really just I built it. I built, or I'm sorry, I, I wrote that book more so to just kind of get it out there. It was more my manifesto or whatever you want to say, yeah. but it's a hell of a book for somebody who wants to read how to get out there and just really work your ass off instead of swinging the hammer, grab the briefcase and go, uh, go market your trade. And the book is a little outdated because it doesn't have all the, I wrote that book back in, I don't know. Uh, I think looks I, like you released it on, well, it was a card on Amazon in 2013. Yeah, right? but I, yeah, but I really wrote it in like 2011. Okay. So, um, you know, it doesn't have a lot of the stuff that you need nowadays, but as far as just the basics, that book can show anybody how to go make a hundred thousand uh, dollars in a trade. Well, and then you, then you obviously, this is your newer book, right? Uh, yeah. Doors. Yeah. So. Seeing doors, a guide to selling your company. Um, that just goes hand in hand with what I do with Peterson acquisitions. I send that book out to all my clients and, and possible uh, clients that want to sell their business. And it's just a book that shows them both the, the, the process and the fundamentals of selling a business, but also the emotional hurdles you got to go through in order to do so. Yeah. And I speak mostly about burnout and boredom in that book. Oh, well, that's uh, even better. Cause that's very easy to uh, pull off. So yeah, uh, everybody's, well, we, we talked about that at the beginning of the show, right? Well, I think at the end of every business, you'll find somebody who's burnt out and bored and just ready for something new. And uh, that's why people sell. They don't sell to retire. They don't sell to 
um, sit on their ass and do nothing. That's not what they do. I mean, I've, I've, I've taken 70 year old men who say they're, they're going to retire and I saw their business. And then a year and a half later, he's asking me for something else. So interesting. Uh, oh, yeah. so I, I, admittedly, I, I'm not an acquisitions guy. I would have expected a significant percentage to be that way. But then again, the bigger business movers, people like Warren Buffett and all these other people, like they're constantly moving portfolios and businesses all over the place. So yeah, uh, I've never, I've never once retired anybody. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Not once. Yeah. I, th there's a guy down in Texas who bought a DNA uh, company and he was 71 years old when he did that. And he retired very well off years and years ago. He retired when he was, 62 or 63 something like that and his retirement just changed it went to buying several businesses and having multiple streams of cash flow that were already established so you know retirement it looks different for everybody but the old the old model you know where you're looking at a you know uh charles swab or whatever you know investment commercial of people just sitting on their ass drinking iced tea. I don't think that works. I think people that are self-employed, they're, they're going to have to do something. You can't be on all the time just to shutting the light off and being done. Well, I mean, I got to say my, my wife's parents, they retired a year ago and they have a home in Colorado and a home here. So they live here half the year, they're there half the year. Uh, but her, my, my brother-in-law, my, my wife's brother, he has two kids. So they get to play, you know, grandparent uh, babysitters. So that keeps them busy. But I would agree with you. Even if I did that and did that, I was like, I would still need to have something you know, to keep me productive. Sure. And I, I, I know that because I'm watching my father. My father's 72, still running his business. He's like, granted, he didn't really have much of a retirement game plan to begin with, but I don't think he would retire. <laughs> well, that was crazy. Uh, no, that was his game plan. I don't know him, but I can, I can, I can already assert that that his game plan was to work until he can't anymore. That was his game plan, right? That's a good point of putting. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, no. I mean that's that's my retirement plan. I don't care how much money I have stacked up; it doesn't matter. My retirement plan is to work until I'm dead. That's it. There you go. Well, because for a lot, some of us that are wired that way, it's a reminder that we have purpose and we can still give back to the world and still do things. So sure. like people think, oh, well, you retired and maybe you become an author. Well, that's still a business. I mean, granted, you can't make a ton of money off of books. Some people can, but I'm like, you're still dedicating time, doing content, producing things, building your brand. Your personal brand is your business. I show people how to do that. So it's, it's uh, it, to your point, how do you want to define retirement? I mean, well, if, I, if, you I, know, if I could fast forward today, I would say I wouldn't mind having a little bit more freedom for some travel, but well, that's, that's just, a, that's book. just a lifestyle change, but you know, they're not, not one time is retirement even mentioned in the Bible. Do you know that? Hmm, interesting. Native Americans didn't retire. That's true. Uh, no civil. I mean, I think, I think retirement is maybe man-made over the last what? 75 years, hundred yeah. years. That's a good point. It's, it's just, it's something that's really not written in our hearts to just sit around. And because and, you're basically allowing yourself to waste away. Yeah. Right. And, and you're here to live and you're here to work and you're here to, you're here to, you're here to give. And even if you're not here to make money, you're still here to bring your natural abilities and resources and who you are as a person and what has shaped you back to those around you in some fashion. And just to say at 65 or isn't that what the government says? 65 is that retirement I think age? The last time it, I looked, it was still that where. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, 65 years old. And, and you get your social security check of 17, $1,800 a month and just sit around. Nah, that's not for me, man. I don't yeah. think it's for you either. Uh, it's probably, <laughs> no, not for you either. <laughs> I, I, especially nowadays, like I said, I was chasing those dreams years ago and I didn't know what I wanted. And then I went to the firefighting thing to take a break, and reset and ground myself. And I'm still finishing that book. Actually that book, since I, you know, I last talked, I finally hired an editor. Mm -hmm. So again, I needed some skin in the game and to stop the timeline and, and make the two on my faster. like, all right, now you're paying for an editor. Now it's, now it's got to get out. So, but it's stuff like that. It's like, I'm, I'm coming with more ideas and more projects now than I've ever had. Mm -hmm. And so why would I eventually want to retire and just sit my butt on a rocking chair on a porch and again, this is your goal in life, more have at it. But most of the people I'm connected with, like you, Chad, we're not thinking like that at all. No, not at all. Not yeah. even on my radar. Not yeah. even on my radar. Because it's yeah. fun. You know, yeah, it gives you purpose. Sure. 
Uh, if you decide to have businesses with employees, it gives you a way to provide for others. Uh, if you're like me right now in my life, I don't want employees. My wife's about to hire a new doctor for veterinary practice. I'm like, that's stressful in itself. I was like, sure. I like the virtual game. I'm That's just my game right now. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. The, the more employees you have, the more headaches you have. Yeah. yeah. And no doubt I about like, it. Listen, I could still give back in the economy. I just hire virtual assistants and, and outsource to other you know businesses. So that's, that's having access to what employees can do, but I can outsource it and be separated from it. And I can help that. They want to hire employees. That's their problem. Right? Go ahead. Great. I'll keep mm -hmm. giving you more business then you can hire the employees and you can deal with that. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Either, either way, you know, it's still, it's still giving back. It's still adding to the economy. It's just in whichever way you choose to do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I was excited because uh, about probably by the end of this month, I might be hiring another VA for my business because okay. I mean, again, less travel, uh, more cash flow, uh, more ways to strategically realign things, going over stuff over the, like you, you said at the beginning of the show, you've been busier than ever, I've been busier than ever. So it's like, oh man, okay, what can I streamline? What can I improve? What can I hand off to alleviate my stress levels? So I think I'm about to create literally a whole new position for that. So Right on, man. Right, right? on. Keep so, pushing. Yeah. But that's the point, right? It's like eventually you learn enough and you realize, okay, what makes me happy? What doesn't? What doesn't outsource or just stop doing it. <laughs> stop yeah. offering it. Yeah. Uh, worst, yeah. Worst case, just stop. I agree. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we talked about that earlier. There was a client that I had to get rid of recently because I'm just like, you're not listening. Like, why are you working with me? Like mm -hmm. I'm here. That's it. It's a two way. Yes. Thank you for your money. But if I don't look forward to these phone calls, that's a stress to me. So I don't need that. So right. I tell people all the time, if you've got that pain in the ass client, then work hard to, so you can justify firing a client. It feels mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> it does. Yeah. To be in that position to, to decide who you want to work with and who you don't want to work with. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. When you, when you can't decide, it starts to feel like a prison. Exactly. Yeah. And again, back to, I mean, it's kind of underlying theme throughout this whole show. Every once in a while we keep coming back to, okay, get out on the road bike, you know, to free your mind, get out of the prison, right? Get out of the home office, me taking a ride over, over the state line with New Jersey, just to pick up some booze, right? get some nice scotch. Like, okay. I need to unplug, get out of my thing. Mountain biking. I'm going to go mountain biking after this. There you go. I'm going to go unplug, go get free myself. Uh, again, back to the business. I don't want this business anymore. Great. I'm ready to flip this business because then I can go acquire a couple others or maybe just one, maybe two or three, depending on how successful that acquisition and, and selling process was. Sure. And that's you. You get to help people do that. It's like you get to, you literally get to help people start whole new chapters. I mean, I, I believe that I help people more than financial planners do uh, tenfold. Yeah. Yeah, you come to me and you sell your business for three, four, or five million dollars. I can convert your life to, you know, being a multi, multi millionaire and change your lifestyle in 10 different ways. I mean, I've seen people have small businesses that are only making a couple hundred grand a year, and I can get them into businesses that make millions a year. I mean, I, I can transform people's lives, no doubt about it. Yeah. It just start, it starts with selling your business, though, because that dry powder, that liquid money that you have, that's what it takes to move up in the game. Um, you, you've got to have a lot of liquid money to go <clears throat> qualify to buy a larger business, a, lar right. a larger business that, that puts out more money, you know, uh, spitting out more cash flow. So if you're making $200,000 a year right now, let's say I sell your business with, for six hundred. dollars Let's just say you walk away the, from the transaction with five hundred grand. I could literally put you into a $5 million business making you $1.5 million a year. So you can go from 200 grand a year to making 1.5 million a year That's just wild. by sell, just by selling your $200,000 business. And so, you know, I'm not here to argue with financial planners, but I mean, if they're making you eight or nine or 10% of your money, I can show you how to make thousands of percent on your money. If you make strategic moves. Oh yeah. That I, that I don't deny. I, I've never actually had to play, you know, flipping a business yet, but I I've read numerous and listened to numerous podcasts about that. Uh, yeah. which actually a quick plug for you, obviously business brokers podcast. So um, I, I think people underestimate that massive influx potential of cash flow. Cause once you have the liquidity, as you hinted at, that gives you much more power to make bigger decisions uh, yeah. that you didn't have before. So, yeah. If you're just, if you're making 200 grand a year, you're paying the bills and then some, and you're putting some away. But by the time you pay taxes and you go on that vacation or do everything else, you're left with a good living. But if I sell that business and I can give you a shot in the arm of 500 grand, now we can go to the bank and now you qualify to, to be 
the owner of a, of a company that pays well over a million dollars. And I've just taken you to, I've taken you, I've, I've given you a quantum leap into a new stratosphere of income. That's what I do for people. Right. I sell their business so they can move up and my website points to it. Start your next adventure, start your new adventure. Uh, don't, don't, if you're bored, if you're burnout, start your new adventure and it starts with selling your business. That's what I do. Awesome, man. Yeah. Lewis, this has been great. I'm glad we've been able to catch up. Uh, yeah, me too. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, obviously I wish there was different mixes of news and different timing of the, of, of society, but just got to roll with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate you having me on. I really do, man. I've enjoyed this with you, Scott. You're very good at what you do and I hope your audience enjoyed it. And I look forward to getting this message out. Uh, once you send me the, the episode, I, I look forward to getting it out. And we definitely will, like we always do. And the good thing is it's already live on Facebook. So you got something to share until we can get you out in the normal podcast cycle because it's probably going to be at least a month out with all the shows we've already recorded. Awesome. Uh, but actually, listen, like like last two attempts a while ago, I asked my guest co-host, you kind of already did leave some really, really powerful final words. But, you know, let's go back a little deeper meaning. Let's go with a legacy message, man. Like everything you're doing, everything that we have going on right now, I've been really trying to remind people about that positive mindset, reminding that every action we take is going to be impacting that legacy that we leave behind in the world. So is there anything all encompassing that you want to kind of hit on for that? Um, I, you know, I, I would, I would, I always try to tell people this, don't let the world tell you what to do. Make sure that you are telling the world what you're going to do. You know, this, this world somehow is designed and I, all meaning, all, all well-meaning behind it. Our parents do it. Our teachers do it. Our professors do it. Uh, people at our church do it. Um, people on our sports teams do it. They, they're always telling you what you should do. It's their way or it's a way or it's whatever. And I just tell people, make sure it's you deciding what you want to do. And that would be my lasting legacy advice. And that's, I, and that's what really grabs me about this whole COVID thing is how easily everybody just was told what to do and everybody just followed it based on really, really insufficient evidence. I agree. So I, I would say that's, that's my two cents. Make sure it's you doing what you want to do and refuse. Don't refuse good advice, No, but, right. but be led by your own compass because otherwise you're going to be led by, 30 other compasses and your, and your compass needle is going to be doing this all the time. And you're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. You gotta, yeah. you gotta follow your true North and uh, it's easier said it's, it's talking in bumper stickers, but it is so profound. If you can just follow your own compass, that's, that's a way to live a deliberate life, live intentionally by the way of your own being rather than being swayed by several other faulty compasses along the way. Well said, sir. Well said. Listen, hang tight. I want to give a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, we finally hit out a full episode. Chad Peterson of Peterson Acquisitions. And uh, we got to hit on a little bit more than just business today. A lot of lifestyle tips, a lot of uh, maybe some visionary for you guys, right? If you're looking to consider selling a business, you ever thought about leveling up? Because that's what I just heard. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to talk about health, talk about business and lifestyle. We hit on, I think, all of it today. Uh, back to the beginning of the show, reminder about positive actions, positive mindsets. Let's all work together and with Chad's prediction, rip the lid off uh, as we come out of this and, and return our economy faster than what other people are predicting. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Remember, you too can live a fuel. And I'll talk to you guys soon.